I pričat ćemo o familijarnim proklestvima, stvari koje progone generaciju posle generacije. Prvo bih želao da pročitam tri stiha iz knjige psalma. Ovo je molitva koju vidjamo u prayer, koju vidjamo kroz Bibliju puno puta. I izabrao sam knjigu psalama da bismo čuli iznova istu molitvu. Prvo je psalm 25.4. Prvo je psalm 25.4. Make me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths and lead me in truth. Objavi mi, Gospode, svoje puteve. Nauči me svojim stazama. Vodi me svojom istinom. Uči me, jer ti si moj Bog. You are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day. Ti si Bog moga spasenja. Tebi se nadam povazdan. Psalm 27, verse 10. Psalm 27, 10. stih. It says, for my father and mother may have forsaken me, but you, O Lord, will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in the level path because of my enemies. Kaže, ako me napuste i otac i majka, gospod će me primiti. Uči me, gospode, svome putu, ravno me stazom vodi radi mrzitelja mojih. And one more, Psalm 86, 11. I još jedan, psalm 86, 11. Again we hear, teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart, so that I may honor you. Opet čujemo, nauči me svome putu, gospode, da postupam po istini tvojoj, da se srcem celim tvog imena bojim. We see the... Many people through Scripture were often calling to God, "Teach me your ways. Teach me your ways." Vidimo puno puta u pismu da razni ljudi mole Boga, traže od Boga da ih nauči, nauči me svojim putevima. And we see often in these psalms that it's associated with times of crisis when we don't know what else to do. We look to God and say, "Teach me what to do." U psalmima vidimo da je to povezano u, u trenucima krize kada ljudi ne znaju šta da čine, oni treba da traže od Gospoda da ih nauči, nauči how, njegovim putevima. And how many of us after we've come to know Christ, we find ourselves later in situations we don't know what to do. I koliko od nas kada se kada se obratimo, kada primimo Hristu naš život, nađemo se u situacijama u kojima ne znamo šta da činimo. Uh, where uh, we find some marriage crisis, we have a crisis with our children, different situations, we don't know what to do, so we say, God, teach me. Nailazimo na krize u braku, krize sa našom decom, na raznim poljima krize i onda obratimo se Bogu i tražimo od njega da nas nauči. I remember when we were living in the Czech Republic in the early 2000s, kada smo mi živeli u Češkoj republici u ranim Mnogi naše crkve su napravljene od vernika prve generacije. Most of the churches at that time had been planted from university students that accepted Christ. Mnogi crkve su tada bile sastavljene, imale su članove univerzitetskih studenta koji su prihvatili Hrista. And it was very common that when a young person would accept Christ, their families would kick them out of the house, so they had no family connections. I bilo je vrlo običajeno da kada mlade osobe prihvate Hrista, da ih njihove porodice odbace. So often in some of these new churches, the oldest person in the church was maybe in their 40s or maybe early 50s. Tako da članovi crkve su bili osobe u njihovim 30-im, 40-im, ranim, možda 50-im godinama. And these people, when they accepted Christ, they got married, they started to have children, build their careers. Ti ljudi koji su prihvatili Hrista, oni su počeli da stvaraju brakove, porodice. However, many of them started to have problems. I mnogi od njih su počeli da imaju probleme. I don't know if you realize, but after the fall of communism, about 50% of the Christians actually left faith after they made their first million crowns. 
u to doba posle komunizma dosta vernika koji su se obratili tada napustili su svoju veru čim su napravili taj prvi milion kada su zaradili prvi milion so when these young christians they started to have problems in their marriages some had problems in other relationships they had problems with their children and they didn't know what to do tako da su ti mladi vernici kada su počeli, kada su suočili sa problemima raznim u porodicama, u braku, u poslu, u društvu, one su, nisu znali šta da čine. And I remember one of the pastors talking with me and said that his church needed spiritual parents. He didn't know how to advise. I sećam se da je jedan pastora govorio kako njihova crkva treba duhovne vođe da bi da bi ih savetovali, kako bi ih savetovali. He said, uh, we don't have any examples of parents and grandparents that could teach us how to have a Christian family. Govorili su, mi nemamo primere od naših očeva i praočeva kako bi nas naučili kako mi da učimo, kako da živimo i kako da učimo svoju decu. He, he said, I don't, we don't have examples of a godly marriage to follow. We don't have examples of godly parents to follow. E, nemamo primer e, pobožnih ljudi koje bismo pratili, pobožnih ljudi e, u braku, bra, pobožnih ljudi koji su u braku da bismo sledili uh, they, njihov primer. They didn't know how to solve conflicts in a good way. Nisu znali kako da rešavaju konflikte na dobar in, način. In many cases I could recognize that Many of these families were growing in their knowledge of the Bible and their knowledge about God, but they remained emotionally immature. E, primećivao sam da mnogi od tih ljudi novobraćenih rastu u svojoj, svom poznavanju Biblije, u svom poznavanju Boga, ali ostaju nerazvijeni u, u, raz, u, u, svom, u svojim emo, emotivno, ostaju nerazvijeni. Um, they were, many were insecure. Mnogi su bili nesigurni. They didn't know how to lead. Nisu znali kako da vode. Uh, they didn't know how to uh, talk about their feelings with their husbands or wives. Nisu znali kako da razgovaraju o svojim osjećanjima sa supružnicima. Uh, many of them could not identify the roots of their own feelings. Why were they getting angry? Uh, mnogi nisu mogli da prepoznaju razloge svoje korene svojih uh, osjećanja. Zašto se osjećaju recimo ljuto, besno? Some of them were carrying scars and wounds from the past that they didn't know how to heal. E, mnogi su nosili ožiljke iz prošlosti koji nisu znali kako da kako da izleče, kako da iscele. And because they could not find these these roots of their feelings, the roots of their problems, they never could grow mature into maturity in their relationships. I zbog toga što nisu mogli da prepoznaju izvore tih tih povreda, e, oni nisu mogli da 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 e, da napreduju u svome rastu. Mi rastemo u svom odnosu sa Bogom kada rastemo u odnosima sa drugima, u ljudskim odnosima. God uses other people to help move us forward in our lives. Bog koristi druge ljude kako bi nas postakao da idemo napred u životu. God says we should love him with all of our hearts but we should also learn to love our neighbors. Bokaže treba da ga volimo sa svim svojim srcem ali takođe treba da volimo i svoje bližnje. So our pastor friend he could recognize this problem because he did not have anyone from the older generation to help him as he was pastoring. Pastor je govorio da on prepoznaje ovaj problem zato što nema nikoga iz prethodne generacije koji bi ga vodio i pomogao mu u rešavanju problema. He, he could see very clearly I don't have a good example to follow. Video je jasno ja nemam dobar primjer da sledim. But what about us? A šta je sa nama? How many of us do not realize that we are following examples that or maybe a sinful example from our family histories. A šta je sa nama? Koliko nas nismo ni svesni da da mi u stvari pratimo neke loše primere, pogrešne primere od naših porodica, familije. Uh, maybe we have not been able to recognize what is something that's godly and what is something that's not in the way we are interacting with others. 
možda još nismo prepoznali šta je to što je od Boga, a šta je to što je od ljudi ili nasledđeno iz naše porodice u interakciji sa drugima. One of the more difficult sayings in the Bible comes from the book of Exodus in chapter 34. Jedna od one of the more difficult sayings in the Bible. Jedna od težih govora u Bibliji u Bibliji dolazi iz izlazak knjige izlaska 34 druga Mojsijeva 34:57. God has just given the 10 commandments to Moses at this in this time. Bog je upravo dao 10 zapovesti Mojsiju u to doba. Moses is bringing them to the people. Mojsih je donosio doneo ljudima. And says God comes down in a cloud and speaks to the people from the cloud. I govori Bog dolazi u oblaku i govori ljudima u oblaku. And we will read from verse 5 through 7. I čitaćemo od u stihovima 5 do 7. Tada je Gospod sišao u oblaku, stao kod Mojsija i izgovorio svoje ime. Gospod. Gospod je prošao pokraj njega i izgovorio svoje ime. Gospod, Gospod, Bog milostivi i milosrdni, spor na srđbu, bogat milošću i vernošću. Iskazuje milost hiljadama, oprašta krivicu, prestupi greh, ali krivca ne ostavlja nekažnjena, nego kažnjava greh otaca na njihovoj deci i unucima sve do trećeg i četvrtog kolena. That last phrase is very difficult for us to understand. Zadnja fraza je jako teška za nas da razumemo. What does it mean that the sins of the parents are upon their children and their grandchildren to the third and the fourth generation? Šta u stvari znači to da da gresi gresi roditelja padaju na njihove naslednike čak i do treće četvrte generacije? We can read in the first part that God loves and, and puts his love on families for a thousand generations. Vidimo u prvom delu da Bog voli i ista i izliva svoju ljubav na na porodice hiljadama generacija unapred. What does it mean that the entire family is affected even to the third and fourth generation? Ali šta znači ovo da su čitave porodice pod uticajem čak i do trećeg ili četvrtog kolena? It does I don't believe that it means that God is punishing the sons and the grandsons because of what a father has done. Ja ne vjerujem da Bog kažnjava sina ili sinove ili unuke zbog toga zbog greha koji otac načinio. And the reason is you can look at Deuteronomy chapter 24. možemo možemo to možemo to videti u ponovljenom zakonu 11 24 it's not written Uh, in ver- chapter 24 verse 16 24:16 it says do not the fathers or children will not be punished for the deeds of their fathers and the fathers will not be punished for the deeds of their sons e, tamo piše da da sinovi neće biti kažnjeni za dela svojih otaca a, a, a očevi neće biti kažnjeni za dela svoje dece in ezekiel chapter 18 it says u ezekiju poglavlje 18 kaže it says Uh, if a son sees his father sinning and does not follow in it he will not be punished. Tamo kaže da kada sin vidi oca da greši i ne ne sledi ga da on neće biti kažnjen. That's in verse 20 of chapter 18. To je u stihu 20 u poglavlju 18. Uh, so it's not that God is saying oh your father son sinned so now I punish you. To znači ne kaže Bog tvoj tvoj otac je sagrešio i sada ćete zbog toga kazniti. But it does show that what one generation does can have an effect on the next generation and the next generation. Ali vidimo da ono što jedna generacija čini može imati uticaja na generacije koje dolaze. We need to recognize that the effect sin can have on future generations in many different ways. Možemo videti da uticaj greh može imati uticaj na generacije koje slede na različite načine. We have all learned patterns of behavior from our parents and our grandparents as we grow up. E, svi smo nekako nasledili neke obrasce ponašanja od naših roditelja. Od sometimes, naših... sometimes we don't even realize the assumptions that we carry about how the world should be, and this affects our emotions and it affects others. Ponekad nismo ni svesni onoga što nosimo u sebi to neko neko verovanje kako bi sve trebalo da funkcioniše i naše mišljenje o drugima da je to već nekako 
unama. So I assume that the world should be one way. Ja uh, pomišljam da uh, sve treba da funkcioniše na ovaj način. I believe that relationship should look in one way. Ja verujem da bi odnosi trebali da funkcionišu na and određeni when, način. And when it's not functioning in the way I believe, then kada, maybe I get angry. I kada ne funkcioniše onako kako ja verujem ili sam uveren, onda se ja žestim. Or I start to act on the way that I assume things should be. Ili počnem da se ponašam na način onako kako ja verujem da stvari treba da budu. And sometimes these patterns can bring blessing on us, but sometimes it can also be destructive. E, ponekad ovi obrasci, nekad ovi obrasci mogu biti blagoslov za nas, a nekada mogu i biti e, pometnja. So today when we leave, this is the goal that I have for us. E, danas e, kada budemo odlazili, ovo je cilj e, koj, koji želim da da mi dobijem. I, I want I want us all to recognize the influence of our family history and uh, and the relational patterns that they had on our lives. E, želim da svi uvidimo uh, uh, obrasce koje ko iz naših uh, uh, Can you say that? Can I want to see the influence of our family history on us? E, želim da uvidimo uh, uh, uticaj naše familije na 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 život na nas. And those relational patterns that we learned that they will how they will affect our lives. I uh, obrasci uh, u odnosima koje ćemo naučiti kako utiču na naučićemo kako ti obrasci familijarni utiču na naše živote. So and I believe that this can begin a new path of spiritual growth for us. Uh, please say I, that again. I'm, I'm just a little bit no, it's okay. I believe that when we recognize these influences, it can lead us to a new journey of spiritual growth. E, kada prepoznamo ove razne uticaje, uh, uh, to prepoznavanje nas može povesti u, u, u drugačiji, ispravan duhovni rast. So, uh, when we leave, I want us to ask God to teach us His ways allow him to transform our emotions and transform kada, our relationships. Kada odemo odavde, eh, želeo bi da, da tražimo od Boga da nas on nauči njegove načine i da transformiše ono, ono što treba da se transformiše. So the first point this morning uh, is that sinful patterns can repeat throughout generations. E, prva tačka je da, e, da naglasimo da jednostavni obrazci mogu da se ponavljaju kroz generacije. Grešni obrazci. Mm-hmm. Simple. Yes, yeah, simple. Yeah, mm-hmm. Not simple. simple. Grešni. Da. To je moja vina. <laughs> uh, there, are, there are many ways that people learn. Postoje razni ljudi uče. Um, when we go to school, we read, we write, we learn this way. Kada idemo u školu, mi čitamo, mi pišemo, učimo na ovaj način. We can learn at different levels, consciously and unconsciously. Možemo da učimo na različitim na različitim nivoima, God, svesno i nesvesno. God even told his people in the Bible to there are different ways to pass on knowledge to the next generation. Bog je rekao i Bibliji da postoje različiti načini da se prenese prenese znanje generacijama. In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 11:19 he says this. Ponovljeni zakon 11:19 kaže ovo: Poučite njima svoju decu, govorite im o njima kad sediš u kući, kad ideš putem, kad ležiš i kad ustaješ. Napiši ih na dovracima svoje kuće i na tvojim vratima, da bi ti se umnožili dani i dani tvoje dece na zemlji za koju se Gospod zakleo tvojim mocima, da će im je dati, dokle god bude neba nad zemljom. So we see, talk to your children about God's word. Evo ovdje vidimo da on govori, razgovarajte sa vašom decom o reči Božijoj. Make it part of your everyday life. Have it be normal in your life. Napravite to da bude svakodnevnica, svakodnevnica vašeg života. Talk when you're sitting down. Razgovarajte kada sedite. Talk when you're standing up. Kada stojite. Talk when you're walking. Kada hodate. Talk when you go to bed. Kada ležete. So you see at one level we're teaching. Ovdje vidimo jedan jedan nivo uh, učenja. It says write it down on your door frames in your houses. Kaže napišite, napišite reč na na vaše dovratke u po svojoj kući. So you see these are all ways that we can pass on values to the next generation. Ovdje vidimo načine na koje na koje možemo preneti Božju reč na sledeće generacije i vrednosti. But look at Leviticus 23:42. 
Gledamo Levicki Levicki zakonik 23.42 Živite u Senicama sedam dana Svi rođeni u Izraelju neka žive u Senicama Da bi vaši naraštaji znali da sam ja Gospod Bog vaš Učinio da narod izraelski živi u Senicama Kad sam ih izveo iz Egipta It says live in these booths So that the new, next generations will know kaže živite u senicama tako da bi vaše sledeći naraštaji znali da sam ja gospod they could tell the next generation yeah your ancestors lived in booths for seven days mogu reći svojim svojim svojoj deci da vaši preci su živeli u senicama sedam dana mogu pričati o tome But there is a different kind of knowing and type of learning that happened when they did it. Aha, ali postoje drugačiji ipak način uh, učenja dece kada su oni to i činili u stvari, ne samo pričali o tome. Those of you who speak Czech or Slovak, you know there's two different words for knowing in Czech language in Slovak. Uh, oni koji pričaju slovački ili češki znaju da postoje dve različite dva različita prevoda za reč znati. Vjedjet uh, as not. There are two different types of knowing and understanding. Vjedjet and znat. Postoje dva, dva različita uh, tumačenja te reči. Uh, because there's different levels of understanding and knowing. Jer postoje različiti nivoji razumevanja i znanja. And it's the way with our families. Isto je tako i sa našim porodicama. We can teach our children some things about God's word and it comes to their minds. Možemo učiti našu decu o nešto iz reči Božije i to dolazi u njihov um. But there are some things that we just absorb, we we learn because it happens around us. Al postoje uh, one stvari koje mi jednostavno apsorbujemo, upijamo i učimo zato što se one dešavaju oko nas. So there are things that we learn how we that how we interact with other people that we just learn by watching the older generation. E, postoji načini na koje možemo naučiti, način na koji najbolje učimo e, e, o interakciji sa ljudima jeste o tome posmatrajući kako to drugi rade. So this is the problem that many Christians face and I face this maybe you face this Mnogi hrišćani se suočavaju sa sa ovime We learn God's word intellectually by reading by hearing sermons e, mi e, e, naučimo reč Božiju učimo reč Božiju slušajući e, propovedi i čitajući We talk we pray together e, pričamo razgovaramo molimo se zajedno But We have also learned emotional patterns and patterns in relationships through experience in our families. Ali također smo naučili obrasce, emocionalne obrasce, obrasce ponašanja kroz našu porodicu, naše okruženje. And, and we never think is that the healthiest way to live. I nikad ne razmišljamo da li je to najzdraviji način da živimo. Uh, So when the Bible uses the word family, it refers to the extended family over three or four generations. Kada Biblija koristi reč porodica, familija, onda uh, se tu podrazumeva tri, četiri generacije. In the biblical Onazi. sense, this includes your brothers and sisters. E, Biblija kaže to uključuje vašu braću, sestre. Your aunts, uncles. Tetke, uja, ujake. Uh, grandparents, great grandparents. Dede, pradede. I think that the Serbian sense of family is a little closer to the biblical sense than perhaps we have in the West. Smisao, srpska smisao porodice je bliskija bi bliskom izrazu za familiju, značenju familije nego što mi imamo na zapadu. So there are many influences on our lives, but for most of us this family is the most powerful group that we will ever belong to. Uh, postoje razni uticaj na nas, ali taj taj uticaj kroz familiju uh, uh, iz koje dolazimo je naj najsilniji, najsnažniji. So some of us even after leaving home, we still find that our family's ways of doing things follow us wherever we go. Uh, 
za mnoge od nas, mnoge od nas primetimo da kada i napustimo dom i, i, i to okruženje, da nas načini ti, ti obrazci e, na koje smo, koje smo naučili ponašanju nas prate gde god idemo. So let's look in the Bible there we can see this in the family of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Sad ćemo pogledati to u, u, u toj liniji Abraham, Jakov, Abraham, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Isaac i Jakob. Jakob. In Abraham or in all of these generations there was a pattern of lies that happened. Lies. Mhm. Uh, tim, lies. Tim se ponavljao obrazac laži. So Abraham, uh-huh. he lied about his wife Sarah twice and said he was her, his sister or she was his sister. Abraham je dva puta lagao za svoju ženu Saru da mu je žena. Uh, oh, sestra. Sestra. Mm-hmm. Isaac and Rebecca, there was lies in their marriage. Also. Isaac i Rebeka bilo je laži u njihovom braku također. Isaac said the same thing about his wife. Isak je isto rekao i za svoju suprugu. Um, Jacob lied to almost everyone. <laughs> Jakov je lagao skoro svakome. Jacob's sons lied to Jacob. They said that Joseph had died from a wild animal. Jakobovi sinovi su njemu lagali. They, they kept family secrets. Čuvali su, imali su porodične tajne. Another problem it repeated in all these generations was favoritism. Mnogi, mnogi drugi problemi su se ponavljali u ovoj, u ovoj uh, familiji. Uh, that the fathers favored one son over the other. Uh, očevi su prefer, preferirali jednog sina uh, umjesto drugog, so, između dva sina jednog. Abraham had Isaac in Ishmael. Abraham je imao uh, Isaka i Ishmael. And the he favored Ishmael as the firstborn and to the point that Sarah asked him to be sent away. Preferirao je Ishmaela kao prvorođenog do te do te tačke da je Sara tražila da se da se oni oteraju. Isaac, he loved Esau more than Jacob. Isak je voleo više Isava od Jakova. Jacob, he loved Joseph more than the other sons than later Benjamin. Jakov je isto tako preferirao jednog sina. Josipa. Pa mislim to sada malo sa engleskog na srpski i to. <laughs> so you can see then those these things had they had they created problems then in the relationships in the family. E, vidimo da, da je to izazivalo probleme u odnosima, porodičnim odnosima. The relationship uh, with Isaac was or with Ishmael was cut off. Odnos Isaka sa Ishmaelom je bio presečen. Jacob, the relationship with Esau was broken. Jakovov odnos sa Isavom je bio slomljen. Joseph uh, was cut off from his brothers. Josef je bio uh, pre, uh, odstranjen od njegove braće. So you see how these patterns of relating created problems in the relationships. Vidimo kako se ovi obrasci, koji se obrasci koji se ponavljaju stvaraju probleme u odnosima dica. We need to recognize that when we have these problems so that we can look to the Bible to find answers. Treba da prepoznamo kada, gde, u kojim područjima imamo ove probleme kako bismo mogli u Bibliji da tražimo konkretne odgovore. And having uh, generational even cultural problems is nothing new. E, imati generacijska i kulturne generacijske i kulturne kulturološke probleme nije ništa novo. In uh, Titus Paul writes in uh, Titus 1:12. E, u Titu 1:12 Paul piš, Pavle piše jedan od njih njihov sopstveni prorok reče hrišćani su kričani su vas da lažljivci zle zveri i lenji trebusi. Ova izjava istinita zbog toga ih strogo opominje da budu zdravi u veri. So you see that they recognized there is a cultural problem. Probably many families had the same problem. Prepoznavali su da postoji problem u kulturi toga, toga naroda. They're lazy, they're this or that. Lenjivci, 
I, I don't know in, in Czech, uh, if you call someone a kretan or someone, it's still a bad thing today. <laughs> to say what? To, to say somebody is kretan or they're from Crete, mm -hmm. it's a bad thing. Aha, yeah. Czech in Czech, when someone says that he is kretan, it's always a bad thing to say kretan. So you see that Paul tells Titus, teach them a new way, be strict with them. Tako da vidimo da Pavle kaže Titu, nauči ih nove načine, budi, budi strok sa njima. Um, if we look at 2 Thessalonians, they had this similar problem. Kada pogledamo drugu Solunjanima, oni su imali sličan problem. It says that there are people who are meddling in others' affairs and things. So. E, vidimo da se ljudi mešaju u tuđe, tuđe stvari. Čuli smo naime da neki od vas žive neuredno, ništa ne rade, nego bez posličare i mešaju se u tuđe poslove. Takvima zapovedamo i zaklinjemo ih u ime gospoda Isusa Hrista. Neka mirno rade i jedu svoj hleb. A vama, braćo, neka ne dojadi činiti dobro. So you see, there's probably a more patterns that need to be addressed by scripture. Tako da vidimo da postoji više obrazaca koji moraju biti naglašeni. So one of the one of the one of the biggest problems that we face is that we do not recognize those patterns that we need freedom from. Jedna od najveć, jedan od najvećih problema koji, koji imamo je taj što mi ne prepoznajemo te obrazce kojih se trebamo osloboditi. So, I would encourage you this morning, it may help to stop and look back at our families. Ohrabriću vas ovo jutro da, da zastanete i da pogledate unazad u svoju familiju, u svoju porodicu. Just like I tried to do this morning, you look back and see what are the things that repeat themselves often in our families. E, da zastanemo kao što sam ja ovog jutra stao i učinio to, da pogledamo, da zastanemo i pogledamo koji su to obrasti koji se ponavljaju uh, 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 kroz naše, našu familiju. Look in your marriages and the lives of the families for the last three generations. Gledajući brakove, odnose i sve što se dešava u posljednje tri generacije unazad. Znači, Are there gledamo. repeated problems like uh, divorce, broken relationships, alcohol abuse? Da li postoje neki problemi koji se ponavljaju, e, recimo razvodi, e, e, zavisnosti od alkohola ili nečeg Are there drugog? Family, family secrets? Da li postoje neke porodične tajne, familijarne tajne? Are there topics we just don't talk about? Postoje li teme o kojima ne razgovaramo? These may give you clues to look for areas where it needs repentance, it needs a new pattern. To su te tačke koje će vam davati da prepoznate. To make what? We can recognize patterns that need to be addressed. Možemo prepoznati, da će vam način da prepoznate da postoje obrasti koji treba da se promene. Another thing that we can do, stop and think about what attitudes have you learned Isto tako možemo zastati i treba da zastanemo i da se zapitamo koji su to, koje to ponašanje koje smo mi naučili. What assumptions do you automatically make in your mind? Koje su to pretpostavke koje mi automatski donosimo? There's a pattern, a pastor named Peter Scazzaro identified ten commandments that we often inherit from our families. Pastor Petar Casero, on prepoznaje deset zapovesti koje mi sami sebi nekako ponavljamo. So, I'll just give a couple of them. For example, money. Reći ću nekoliko njih, novac. Money, what is your assumption about money? Koja je tvoja pretpostavka o novcu? Is it your source of security? Da li je on tvoj izvor sigurnosti? Is it... The more you have, the more important you are. Da li razmišljaš što ga više imaš, sve si bitni. Is it our house must be bigger than the neighbor's house? Da li možda moja kuća treba da bude višlja od susedove kuće? Is it I must have the right brands of clothes to show everyone I am successful? Treba da se, da li možda razmišljate, treba da se oblači markirano da bi se pokazao drugima uspešan? 
Another area is conflict. How do you solve conflict? I druge oblasti, konflikti, kako rešavate konflikte? Do you avoid conflict at all costs? Da li izbjegavate konflikte po svaku cenu? Uh, do you, you assume don't let people get angry at you? Do everything you can to keep them calm? E, činite ljude da se pazite da se ljudi naljut, ne naljute na vas, učinite sve da da ih uh, držite ona, mirnima. Or is it loud angry angry constant fighting is normal? Ili je možda glasno agresivno uh, uh, sukobla, sukobljavanje normalno za I, I remember one Roma family in our church in Brno said we have two volumes. Kaže jedna romska porodica Rom, Roma je rekla da oni u porodici imaju dva dva volume jasno glasa visine glasa silent or screaming ili vika tiho ili vika nema između there's nothing between is that is that normal in your history da li je to normalno u vašoj istoriji vašem životu what about expressing grief or loss ili izražavanje tuge ili gubitka is sadness was it a sign of weakness in your family da li je izraziti tugu bio znak slabosti u vašoj porodici were you never allowed to get depressed strong people don't get depressed da li vam nikad nije bilo dozvoljeno da da se pokažete depresivni el snažni ljudi nisu depresivni what about expressing anger Šta je sa izražavanjem besa? Is anger dangerous and bad? Da li je e, e, bes loš i opasan? Or is do you explode to make your point? Ili eksplodirate da biste nešto naglasili? You see the child doing something wrong. Kada vidite dete da čini nešto loše? Does it pogrešno? Wh- what is the right way to correct them? Koji je vaš pravi način da ih ispravite? Hey, hey. Or Hey, Poitsen, you come here. Koji od ta dva načina? Which way? Koji način je taj koji vam dolazi? Family. What is the value of family for you? Koja je vrijednost porodice? Do you owe your parents everything that you've done, that they've done for everything they've done for you? Da li dugujete vašim roditeljima za sve što su učinili za vas? You, are, is family most important? Da li je porodica najvažnija? Um, what is the value there? Koja je vrijednost tu? Um, relationships. Odnosi. Do you assume don't trust people or they will hurt you? Da li pomišljate e, ne veruj ljudima jer oni će te povrediti? Or don't show vulnerability. Ili ne pokazuj ranjivost. What about your attitudes towards success? A kakav je va- vaš stav o uspehu? Success means getting into the best school. Da li to znači ulazak u najbolju školu? Is it mean making lots of money? E, da se obogatite, napravite puno novca. Is success getting married and having many many children? Da li uspeh za vas znači udati se, oženiti se, imati mnogo mnogo dece? And maybe one more, feelings and emotions. I onda osjećanja i emocije. Are you is the your family rule say you're not allowed to have certain feelings? Da li vaše uh, porodično pravilo jeste nisi dozvoljen, nije dozvoljeno da imaš osjet da iskažu uh, tu? Is it feelings are not important? Uh, da li uh, osjećanja nisu bitna? Or is it feelings are everything? You Ili opet osjećanja su sve. So if we think through these things it helps us helps us to identify the commandments that we have learned from our family. E, prolaženje kroz svih ovih tačak, kroz sve ove tačke koje sam naveo e, nas čine da prepoznamo ta, te neke komande koje smo naučili iz naše porodice. But it doesn't it doesn't mean oh I cannot change my family was this way that's why I'm mm. this way. Ali to ne znači, a ja ne mogu da se promenim, zato moja porodica je takva, pa sam i ja taka. I have a bad marriage because my family, my parents fought all the time. E, ja sam imao loš brak, zato što moja, u mojoj porodici se isto svađalo. Znamo. No, the, 
we recognize these things so that it shows us where God wants us to grow. Mi prepoznajemo ove stvari da bi nam one pokazale gdje Bog želi da idemo. We can replace these unhealthy assumptions with God's assumptions. E, možemo da zamenimo ove nezdrave, e, nezdrave uh, uh, assumptions. Postoj, uh, attitudes. Attitudes, uh, ponašanja, ponašanja, ova nezdrava ponašanja ili te zaključke e, e, sa, sa Božijim načinom, sa zdravim načinom. So we can... Uh, it just opens the window to allow the Holy Spirit to come in and speak to us. Otvoriti prozor da dozvolimo Duhu Svetom da dođe i da nam govori. God adopts us, this is the last point, God adopts us into a new family. Ovo je zadnja tačka. Bog nas je usvojio u novu porodicu. He invites us to imitate our Heavenly Father. On poziva nas da imitiramo našeg nebeskog Oca. In Matthew 3, Jesus was being baptized. U Mateju 3, Isus je bio kršten. And God, the Father said, this is my son, I'm well pleased in him. I Bog kaže, ovo je moj sin i ja sam zadovoljan njime. He is showing us a, a relationship between the Father and the Son. Pokazuje nam tu odnos između oca i sina. And he wants us to imitate Jesus as Jesus was imitating his Father. I tu nam pokazuje da kazuje nam da želim da treba da imitiramo Isusa i njegovog oca. We have, odnos. We have a, a possibility to inherit good things from a new family line. Imamo mogućnost da nasledimo dobre stvari iz iz nove porodične linije. And that's where we get back to the the prayers we started with. I tu se vraćamo na početak na onu molitvu koju smo izgovarali u početku. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Nauči me svoje puteve, Gospode. Even if our natural family taught us things that were not good. Čak i ako nas je naša prirodna porodica naučila stvari koje nisu dobre. We can learn new things. Možemo naučiti nove stvari. We can say, teach us new ways, Jesus. Možemo reći, nauči nas nove stvari, Isuse. Teach me how to show love in new ways. Nauči me kako da pokažem ljubav na novi način. Teach me how to open up and, and be vulnerable to my wife or to my husband. Nauči me kako da se ponovo otvorim i budem osjećajna prema mom suprugu ili supruzi. Teach me healthy ways to relate to money, to relate to emotions, to relate to anger. Nauči me dobrom, dobrom odnosu prema novcu, prema grehu, prema u vezi sa grehom, novcem i svim ostalim. We can learn something new. Možemo naučiti nešto novo. So today maybe you have as I've been speaking you have recognized some generational problems in your family. Ako ste se malo ispitali, možda i sada možete prepoznati verovatno neke neke obrasce. It means that now you're in a position to break this curse. To znači da ste sada u poziciji da da prekinete tu tu kletvu. Don't allow it to be passed on and repeat to the next generations. Nemojte dozvoliti da bude prenešena na sledeću generaciju. And I want to encourage all of us this week Želim da nas ohrabrim ove nedelje. Think back and look at those unspoken rules that you have learned in your family. Pogledajte unazad i i i prepoznajte one neizgovorene zakone koje ste nasledili svoje porodice. And then uh, compare them to what God says in his word. I onda ih uporedite sa onim što Bog kaže u njegovoj reči. And this is something that I think we need to take time to speak with others about. I mislim da je ovo nešto što treba da 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 iskoristimo vreme da pričamo sa drugima o tome. Sit with your wife or with your husband and talk about these things from your history of your family. Sedite sa svojim supružnikom i pričajte o ovim stvarima koje ste nasledili jedno i drugo. Get with some people from the church and talk about these things. Nađite se sa ljudima iz crkve i pričajte sa ovim ovim stvarima. Pray together about these things you've discovered. Molite se o o tome šta ste otkrili. Because this can be be the beginning of allowing God to teach you new ways. Ovo može i ovo mi moglo biti početak da da dozvolite Bogu da vas nauči novim na novom načinu. Okay. Amen. Amen.